you are familiar, the Analyzer 3.10 and this user interface won't be too new for you, but there are of course slight changes. One of these is under Options, the new Prediction Model Manager. As the name suggests, this is the tool where we create and manage our prediction models. I've already started the Prediction Model Manager and now we will create our first model. The user interface of this tool is quite simple. It is divided into three bigger areas. On this big window, you can see the created prediction windows, uh, prediction models. On the right side, you can see the properties of those models. And down here, we get additional information about the quality of those models. We now want to create a new prediction model for our data. And for that, we have two buttons up here in the, in the toolbar. One is add time-based prediction models and the other is add a value-based prediction model. The difference between those two is actually quite sim simple. The time-based prediction model will predict the behavior of a specific data point in the correlation to the time, and the value-based prediction model will do so in correlation to another Xenon data point. For now, we will stick to a time-based prediction model. And I create a new one. This wizard will now guide us through the process of creating that prediction model. The first step always is that we have to create, uh, define which variables we'd actually like to predict. As a lucky coincidence, we have a variable that is called predict me, and I will just take that. The next step is the data fetching configuration. Here we have to define where the data for our training should come from. First of all, we will define the training data time range by defining a start time and an end time. We can use a start time as a fixed timestamp, or we can use a relative look back time, which is what I will do for now. I will look back two hours from the current timestamp. The end time can be defined in a similar way by creating a look back time relative from the current timestamp or from the last finished minute, hour, day, and so on. Last but not least, we have to select which connector should be used, in my case a SCADA runtime connector, and from which archive the data should actually be taken. In my case, there is only one archive that will hold the data for us. In this tab, we finally get to the model configuration. First, and the most important step is to define a good name for our prediction model, which will be my first model in this case. The second parameter is about periodicities. The kind of prediction model that we are using, linear regression, is heavily depending on periodicities that could be in your data. And therefore, it is very important that when you know of those periodicities, you define them in here. This will help your model to get much more precise. In my case, I know that the data we have has a periodicity of about 15 minutes. So I will just Go for a user-defined periodicity of 15-minute recurrence. And now you can see down here in this chart that this periodicity will be displayed by those, those vertical bars. You see that we have really this, this kind of period, period in the data. The next parameter is the training data split. In this case, we take 85%, which means that the first 85% of our data set will be used for training the algorithm, while the last 15% of our data set will be used for evaluation. That evaluation is quite important because we later want to see how good or how precise our model actually, actually is. The last step is data cleansing. Of course, every prediction model can only be as good as the training data that you use for it. As soon as you have outliers in your data are invalid data, you should use this data cleansing property to get rid of that kind of data. For now, we won't need that because my simulation will only produce valid data for our prediction model. So I think we are done for now. When I hit this next button, the Xenon Analyzer will actually create that prediction model and already train it with the training data that we have specified. And down here we can see the results, how that worked. The first and most important key indicator is the correlation coefficient, which means how equally the training data and our original data will actually behave. In this case, most of our data has a correlation coefficient near to 1, which is very good. 
And on the other side, we have absolute and relative errors, which are quite low. So I think we can be quite satisfied with our model. And of course, we can have a look at a chart that will tell us how this model actually looks in real data. Here we can compare how the data and our predicted data actually look like. And you can see those two fit together quite well. So for now, I think we are ready with using this first prediction model that we have created. And that will be something we will do in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.